So this video is about how to make a sawdust kiln, a simple sawdust kiln that you can make out of a few reclaimed regular bricks. Um, I'm going to fire some pots in it like this, these little greenware pots like this in it. And so it's a bisque firing and I'm going to show you how I built the kiln, how I fired it and then what the pots turned out like. With this particular way of firing pottery, there is often quite a high uh, breakage rate amongst the pots. So I'm interested to see how how the how they survive. I haven't used this method before. I've never built a brick kiln before like this. So it's a bit of an experiment for me. And I'm using a selection of different clays as well. I'm using some Raku clay some grogged terracotta clay, some stoneware clay and a bit of grogged porcelain as well and I'm just going to see which ones look nicest and which ones fare the best in the harsh conditions of the, of the burning sawdust. So I'm really excited about it and I hope you enjoy it. If you enjoy the video do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and then you'll get a notification when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching, see you in a minute. So these are the pots that I'm firing and this is where I decided to position the kiln. It's on a level piece of ground and it is quite far away from any trees or any foliage. The ground's quite damp so I wasn't too worried about the grass catching light. And I made the base of the kiln out of two layers of bricks so that if burning sawdust fell through one layer of bricks it would be caught by the second layer and just to add a bit of extra insulation. These bricks are reclaimed bricks. I got them free from Facebook Marketplace. I just had a look and there was somebody who was getting rid of a pile of bricks from her front garden and she just wanted to get rid of them so she was happy for me to take them for nothing. So they are a little bit beaten up but I didn't really mind about that. I know that the bricks are quite good quality bricks. They're quite good quality clay bricks, which would have been quite expensive to buy if I'd bought them. So I didn't really mind that they were a little bit chipped and a bit gnarly. And I just tried as best I could to align them so that any gaps between the bricks were kept at a minimum. I wasn't too worried about there being a few gaps in the bricks because it would just enable a bit of oxygen flow and a bit of airflow throughout the kiln and make sure that the 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 sawdust stayed alight. So I divided the kiln up into two sections. I had a lower section. The lower section was two bricks deep. So once I'd built the wall up by two levels of brick, then I started to put some sawdust in. This, as you can probably see, is just regular sawdust that I picked up from a local pet shop. And I put in a layer of, it was probably about two inches deep. And then I just positioned the pots upright in the in the sawdust. Like I say, it was a mixture of raku clay, stoneware clay, a bit of porcelain, and some terracotta too, just because I wanted to see which one would be look the nicest and survive the best. So once they're positioned, I filled each of the pots up with a little bit of sawdust. And then just covered the whole thing up with another layer of sawdust right until it was level with the top edge of the second brick. And 
and then once that was all in place I put some wire mesh it was steel mesh over the top just to create a shelf really so that I could put another layer of pottery in and that when the sawdust burnt down the pots on top wouldn't just uh, drop onto the ones beneath and as I was building it I did think about leaving a gap in the bricks where I might be able to put a thermocouple in just to see what temperature the kiln got to but this was the first time I'd built it and I'd not fired it before and I I just really wanted to keep it as simple as I could and see what happened so next time I fire it I probably will adapt it in some way so that I can um, put a thermocouple in there and just see how hot it gets so that's the second layer of the kiln built again it's just two bricks deep and I'm doing exactly the same thing putting about two inches of sawdust in there and then positioning the pots on the sawdust layer So like I say this is bisque firing because the pots that are going in there are greenware pots and I had done a bit of reading around and done a bit of research and I do know that they are the, the you know that the, quite often they will break greenware pottery will break when it's in a pit fire or a sawdust fire so I was expecting I really didn't didn't know what to expect actually but I was expecting some of it to break and next time I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do I'm going to put some bisque fired pots in there and add some colorants and some I might even do a saga firing and just see how that works out but with this firing really I just wanted to see whether I could actually get the clay to turn into ceramic and also like I say because it was the first time I'd used it I think just my sort of general stress levels couldn't manage doing anything more complicated than just putting the pots in there and seeing whether I turned them into ceramic or not. So once it was full of sawdust, I just made a little dip in there and scrunched up some newspaper, as you can see, and tried to get it to stay in place, and then sort of pinned it down with a bit of kindling. my handy fire blanket and my extinguisher just in case it all got a bit out of hand and I did squirt a bit of lighter fluid on there which might be cheating I don't know but I just wanted to make sure that it set alight which it did as you can see it set alight quite easily and then I just left it to burn until all of the kindling had burnt down and the top layer of the sawdust was um, smouldering. I gave it a few boosts with the kindling just to make sure that the, the sawdust stayed alight. I had read that sometimes when you cover them up with the lid that they can go out and I didn't really want that to happen so I just wanted to make sure that the fire was really well established. This is speeded up by the way, it didn't burn that quickly. This is speeded up by about four times. So there I am just putting a last little bit of kindling on there, trying to make sure that the fire 
is hot enough before I put the lid on. And there it goes, that's the lid, it's just a sheet of steel. So I left a gap of about three inches I think initially, just to make sure that it stayed alight. And I left it semi-covered for, it was probably about an hour actually, and just gradually over that period of time I moved the sheet of metal over a little bit more, sort of inch by inch until it was completely covered. And then once I was pretty happy that it was going to stay alight, I just put a couple of bricks on top, really just to pin the steel sheet down a little bit closer to the top of the bricks, but also just in case the wind picked up, I didn't want the lid to be blown off. I mean, it was a fairly still day, um, in spite of how much the smoke is blowing around. Um, it was actually, it wasn't especially windy but I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't going anywhere because I, I wasn't going to be sort of watching it for the next 12 hours. Although I was around I didn't leave it completely unattended but I didn't want to stand and watch it smouldering away for 12 hours. So the bricks are just to keep the lid secure then once the bricks were on and it was fairly tightly sealed, it did sm start smoking quite a bit. It smoked like that for, I don't know, it was probably about maybe half an hour or so. And you can see there's a little bit of smoke coming out of the gaps there. So this is 10 o'clock at night. I lit it at about 10 o'clock in the morning and um, you can't really see it in the dark, but it was still smoking a bit here, so it was definitely still smouldering away, and the bricks were still hot, as was the lid. So it's now the next morning. Um, it's just gone nine o'clock, and the kiln is now completely cool on the outside. Um, the last time I checked it last night was about 10 o'clock, and it was still hot on the outside and smoking a bit. So that was just over 11 hours ago. I don't know exactly when it became cold because I've just checked it now, but it's cold now. So I'm going to have a look and see what's going on inside. Now, I'm going to put some gloves on because, not because this is hot, but because it's actually quite cold out here and my hands are a bit cold. Um, now, about three hours after this started burning, I did hear some popping sounds coming from inside that sounded a bit like firecrackers going off, so it's a possibility. There was about three popping sounds um, in quick succession, and I just assumed it was something shattering in there, one of the pots shattering in there, so I don't know whether that's the case or not. It might have just been the bricks expanding. Let's have a look. Okay. Oh, well, it looks like nothing, nothing has broken by the looks of things. Let's take a closer look. Let's have a look at this. Look at that. Wow. So let's have a look. Okay. Oh. 
Well, it sounds ceramic. I don't know what temperature it went up to. I didn't use a, a thermocouple with the kiln because because this was just a test run. I just wanted to keep it as simple as I could. And that's quite nice. I wanted to keep it as simple as I could really just to see whether the pots would survive. Um, but next time I probably will use a thermocouple really just to see what temperature it gets up to. Now that was the one with terra sigillata on and that looks really nice, doesn't it? So that was terracotta. That's a little bit of terracotta clay. Now what was this? That was the Raku clay. I like that. Now what was this? This was this was just stoneware, that was just a bit of buff stoneware. Now what I'm gonna have to do is I'm going to have to take the top layer of this kiln off to get to the pots at the bottom because they're bricked in. Okay, I shall do that now. Oh, that looks lovely. That was a burnished stoneware. That was just burnished, burnished stoneware too. Ah, now look, maybe that's what that popping noise was. Now, funnily enough, that's the Raku clay, which I thought would do better. I mean, I thought that that would probably be survive, survive the most, but it looks like a little bit's popped off there. Still, That tiny weeny bit out of the entire ball of the pots, I think, is pretty good going. Got one in here as well. Ah, uh, uh, uh. that's what it was I heard popping. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. So I think probably what happened with this one was this was a bit of damage from the explosion, from this, this little one exploding. Gosh, okay. Well, I think that's not too bad really in terms of the survival rate was pretty good. So once I'd unloaded them from the kiln, I gave them a bit of a dust off. They look quite rough and ready at this point. But then once I'd given them a bit of a general clean, I polished them with some wax, just applied some beeswax and gave them a bit of a polish with a rag. And this is what they looked like once they'd been given a bit of a sheen. And I think they look quite nice actually. I think I like the terra sigillata one and I also like the terracotta ones as well actually. I like the combination of the brown and the black on the terracotta. So I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. If you did enjoy it please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe and then I'll see you next time when I post another video and in the meantime thanks for watching. Bye!